everybody, Tom Barnes. Stories from the 78 here at City Winery in the West Loop celebrating International Women's Month with Caroline Schrader. She is the winemaker here. She's been here for nine years and uh, is the winemaker currently. I'm going to talk about her story of where she started. Believe it or not, she was an architect before she was a winemaker here at City Winery. They also have another location down at the Riverwalk. I'm going to talk to her about her story and the amazing journey that it is. That is this story from the 78. All right, so I'm doing my best to pretend that I'm fancy, but I'm not. Caroline, though, is. That is Caroline right there. She's doing her fancy thing. How are you doing, Caroline? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. You know what? I and mean, for the sake of cheese factor, why don't we just let me, well, hold on, get the camera right on me. For the sake of cheese factor, we'll do a little cheers before the interview, because why not, right? Right, of course. Uh huh. But that's fantastic. Oh, that's so, so what are we drinking there? Just so we make sure we say that. So this is a Pinot Noir mm -hmm. uh, from the Russian River Valley in California. Okay. So near Sonoma and Napa uh, and drinking it right here in the middle of Chicago. So. Right, which is, has something to do with you as the winemaker here at City Winery in the West Loop and also down at the Riverwalk. And, uh, you know, it is International Women's Month. And I thought, why not talk to a badass winemaker? And I, that is you. So congrats on just urban winemaker in the third largest city in the United States that didn't even think about wineries. Is it the tenure. third largest? Yes, it is. Okay. I, I lose track of some of these details. Like, <laughs> yeah, I've I been have here my entire life, so it just, I don't know. Yes, I, you know, it is, at least for the foreseeable future. Okay. It might change in a couple of years mm -hmm. with uh, uh, yeah. Houston going crazy on us. But yeah. either way, number three. But that's a that's a huge deal because there's a lot of people who want wine and you kind of need to be really good at it, which you are, obviously, because you are the winemaker here. But that's awesome. You know, I feel very lucky, I think, and privileged to, uh, I'm from Chicago, mm -hmm. so, um, and being able to do something that I love with wine and sharing it with the city is just really sort of, uh, just really special for me, and so I feel very lucky to be here, for sure, so. Absolutely, and, you know, don't feel like you can't take a sip when we're talking. This is an <laughs> informal thing, so you take a swig whenever you need to, but okay. this is the second career. You started off as an architect here in the I city, did, which yeah. is not a small feat in itself. You're designing buildings for, or designing for buildings here in Chicago and all over the place, right? Yeah, primarily in the Midwest in Chicago, but yeah, I went to school down in Champaign for undergrad, and then I went to IIT here in the Bronzeville neighborhood in Chicago. Uh, for grad school, all for architecture, and then I started working in the industry um, for about five years, and you know, really studying architecture in Chicago and working in the architecture. It's one of the greatest cities, I think, for architecture in the world. Third and largest. So, third, yes. In the United States. <laughs> um, and so, so yeah. Definitely. So then you're like, I want to, I want to do wine. You know, it was kind of not, I don't want to say by accident or a mistake, but um, it was just sort of something that uh, became a hobby. I, you know, started drinking wine in college and then eventually made my way out to California and got sort of hooked with meeting with winemakers and drinking more wine. And then it was something that I was, oh, I really love this and want to do it for, you know, my full time gig and hopefully make, make a living off of it. So it was something that I started in haven't really looked back on, I guess. I know, it's so. pretty amazing that it, this is a second career. You know, people spend a lot of time in their first career trying to get to a place where yeah. they feel satisfied for that first career. And you are you know, you found that, you were doing your thing, and then you're like, you know what, though, I really love this winemaking thing because it's so much more than just making the wine, obviously. It's mm -hmm. about the culture of the industry. And you picked a really great place because you have the factor of great food and great music that combines all of it together that is the experience here. Definitely. Yeah. I think, um, you know, coming to City Winery the first time, you don't really sort of understand everything that we're trying to do until you actually really experience it. Because um, at sort of first glance, it's kind of like, wow, you know, a winery in the middle of the city and we happen to have a concert venue and a restaurant, but... And the you know, Riverwalk, right? And the Riverwalk, <laughs> yes. And so, you know, the three pieces kind of really come together when you come and see a show and drink the wine and eat the food and it's kind of we're trying to create a memory here i think and so um and you know me uh, being the winemaker i'm just trying to create sort of like you know one of the parts of the puzzle and and hopefully provide 
a great experience for our guests. So. so for folks who are not completely familiar with a winemaker, you know, there's the harvest time, which is the same time every year, right? Ish. Typically, right? Yeah. So in the fall months, yep. So that's when you're crushing the grapes, you're getting them all in these fermenters, right? And the whole thing. What does a winemaker do when it's not harvest time? You know, because I think a lot of people just don't know the maintenance that goes into this job. I mean, here we are in the middle of Chicago, surrounded in, this is your office essentially, right? It is, yeah. It's every day though. It's not just one time a year that people it's, might think. For it's every day. Yeah, we work every day. Um, and so, you know, during the fall months, that's kind of like our, what I say, Olympics of our industry. We're busy processing fruit, fermenting the grapes. Uh, but then during the non-fall months, we're really sort of focusing on the previous year's wines. So, for example, we're in 2023 now. So now we're getting all the 2021 wines, the wines that we produced in 2021 ready for bottling and service and whatnot. So it's kind of like a revolt. It's a constant cycle. And so... Is, um, is that... Are, is that what we're looking at here with these yeah, barrels? Yeah, so a lot of these barrels, I mean, we just still happen to have a few different vintages or years in here of wine. Um, you'll see some barrels from 2022. So this is kind of newly fermented wine. So uh, you'll see that this wine was barreled just this past November. Yeah, right around Thanksgiving. Um, but then if you come around the corner here. Yeah, we're mobile. We have, we have wine uh, sitting in barrels from 2020 and 2021 that we're getting ready to bottle or put on tap for our guests. Um, and so while we may not be as hands-on right now with the newest wine, so from 2022. Are those in there? Uh, these are actually all empty, believe oh. it or not. These okay. are only really used three months out of the year during harvest. This is, oh, these are our fermenters where we're actually uh, fermenting the grapes, fermenting the juice into alcohol. And so it's kind of funny, like the biggest piece of equipment in our winery, we only use three months out of the year. That's how it always is. Uh, it? <laughs> yeah, so it may not be the most efficient use of space, but um, but, but they're, they're pretty to look at. <laughs> they right? are. They're nice. Everyone really likes seeing them, and um, so. Uh, but yeah, it's a very in, important, critical piece of equipment, I would say, in our winery. But uh, but yeah, it is a little ironic that they're empty like seventy five percent of the year. So so the. Um, the wine that's going to be uh, in bottles mm -hmm. is what we're seeing here. Is this, yeah. the, is this the whole load of it? You guys have no, it spread out no. all over. We, have, we currently have about 200 barrels or so right now that we're maintaining. And, no pressure. Uh, we, do, we do keep some here in the West Loop, uh, but then we've kind of outgrown this space quite a bit. Um, so we do work in this sort of McKenzie industrial area where we store, that's kind of where our barrel house is, and that's where a lot of the barrels are located and we're constantly working over there as well, just checking up on the wines, getting the wine ready for bottling, tap service. So um, it's a lot of kind of checking in on the barrels. Yeah, is it important basis. to keep the barrels topped off? It is, yeah. So, so how do you do um, that if it's already in the barrel? So what we do is, since wood is a porous material, mm -hmm. we're losing wine through evaporation on a regular basis. So what we'll do is on a weekly basis, we'll actually go around to each individual barrel and uh, we don't want any sort of headspace or airspace in the barrel. So we'll go around to each barrel and top it up with wine that um, is either the same as in the barrel or similar. So like we'll top red wine barrels with red wine, Got it. white wine barrels with white wine. So. Very cool. Yeah. I see stuff I've never known and, and, it, and it's constant. You have to keep on it. Like I'm sure there's like a rotation that you have to just check on and then you have to go down to the barrel house, I'm sure as yes. well, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you know, it's a bit of a kind of creating routine, um, but then every day is sort of different. You know, you might be focusing on one certain wine uh, one week and then the other week you're kind of focusing on something else, but the tasks are similar every week, you know, sort of just making sure that um, the wine is kind of progressing the way you want to while it's being safe in barrel, no oxygen exposure. And then, of course, always sort of thinking about what we're going to release next and bottle and tap. So. And you mentioned the fact that, you know, some of the food might be paired with the wine, some of the wine might be paired with the food. But either way, that's your decision in some aspects, right? And being the winemaker here at City Winery puts you in a position where a lot of people prior to you being it have fought for to be in that position. So 
just because it is, uh, you know, an empowering position, I, you know, I imagine it wasn't easy for you to get to this spot just because a you were coming from a different industry altogether, mm -hmm. and then you were like, yeah, you know what, I want to do this, but I'm gonna do. You didn't, weren't just like, I want to be somebody at a winery that's pouring wine for people. You wanted mm -hmm. to be the wine maker, which I think right. is just awesome. Yeah. Was that a tough journey though? Um, a little bit, yeah. And I think part of it was sort of really trying to figure out where I wanted to fit in in the industry. So. Um, I did have experience with selling wine at a wine shop at first and then, but I was always in the back of my mind, I was always sort of more interested in the technicality behind the wine, how it's made, the chemistry behind it. Um, you know, me coming from an architecture background, having more of like a, a technical physics uh, background, mm -hmm. I was sort of like, well, you know, how do you take that way of thinking and apply it to wine. And so I was always sort of like more technically minded, I guess. Um, and plus I really like being behind the scenes too and getting my hands dirty and using my hands to create something. Whereas, uh, you know, front of house pouring wine is a little bit different. It's more kind of customer forward facing. Um, I like being behind the scenes and actually doing the work. So you got a hell of an office back here. Yeah. This yeah. is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm jealous. You get to sample <laughs> wine all day. Did you actually take part in uh, harvesting that wine that you're drinking right now? I did. That's gotta yes. be pretty surreal, right? For, yeah. uh, for the scale that it is. It's not like you're making like a little beer batch in your kitchen here. You right. I mean? Right. This is the real deal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We, t we produce about uh, 50 to 60 tons of grapes a year. Um, and I've worked here, I've been at City Winery for about nine years now. So I've seen a lot of wines and vintages kind of come and go. Mm -hmm. And so I sort of developed this kind of personal relationship with each vintage, I'd say. Sure. And so, you know, there's, there's some that are better than others, I think. Um, but it's always kind of interesting to see kind of what's, what's next and what things will be like six months, nine months from now. And, you know, everyone's always really amazed that we're doing all this here in this footprint in the middle of the West Loop. and Or even the um, middle of the country, right? Yeah. Like it's crazy, mm -hmm. but it happens and it's yeah. on par with anything else. Right. Absolutely. Very cool. So. Uh, people want to come in. What's the best way would you recommend for them if they wanted it? Is it reservations to do like a, a tasting or do you recommend them to do a tasting or do the food, the whole thing, or should they do the trifecta concert, tasting dinner? What do you, what's your, you know, idea? I honestly, I think I would jump in and do the trifecta. Yeah, why not? Right. Have dinner, see a show, order a flight of wine in the concert venue while seeing a show. I, I honestly, the first, I'll never forget the first time I saw a show here and ordered the food and ordered the wine. It was a, an experience I'll never forget. Um, and it was just kind of something that you just don't find everywhere. No. And being in Chicago, it was just, and it was just incredible. And so you just kind of remember all these small details of, of the experience. And that's what we're trying to do here. So. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. It's about the yeah. experience, it's not about drinking a glass of wine. It's about the experience that right. glass of wine brings you with the people you're with and the, the sensory of the food and the music and the whole thing. Right. Yeah, absolutely. What, do you, what are you drinking there again? I forgot. To so say. this is Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. It's, it's my favorite favorite variety to to make and to drink. So but I'm when, a Pinot Noir girl. But when I you're guess. done, maybe with the wine, because you work in the winery and you're like, you know what? I need a little palate cleanse. I need something different. What do uh, what do you what do you get after? We honestly we drink a lot of beer in the winery. You what do you uh, mean a so lot of have, beer? Oh, you have... mean <laughs> this beer right here? Like. <laughs> You are a true Midwest girl, you know what? Yeah. Here, let's grab PBR. Yeah, here we go. So why not? Here there's go. Uh, nothing better after a long crush here. day during harvest. So when all the work's done, we'll sit around and and drink beer. And well, I, mean, I love PBR. Uh, yeah, what's so. wrong with PBR? Fantastic. Cheers. Cheers. Caroline, thank you so much for <laughs> thank you. hanging out with me. And reservations are best for to come by, would you say? Yeah, I mean, reservations for sure for the dining room, um, go on our website, find a show that you wanna come and see. You could buy tickets online or give us a call. Uh, we do have wine tours on the weekends that are really popular. You get to come see behind the scenes, drink wine, um, but really to kind of fully immerse yourself in what we do here. Mm -hmm. I think seeing a show. For seeing sure. a show. All right. Dinner, well, so. You heard it from Caroline. Come yes. out here, see a show, uh, save this for later, but. 
hit the wine because you want to check out the wine and the food. Thank you very much. I appreciate you uh, coming out here. But with the website, real quick. Uh, citywinery.com. Ah. And then from there, you could search to Chicago. So There you go. And yes. uh, if you have uh, any questions for me, Tom Barnes, Chicago at gmail.com. Or head over to the website, storiesfrom78.com. Thank you very much. Uh, Caroline, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Cheers for one more time by. to PBR Cheers. and to your career so far. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. you.